What's up, YouTube? It's Garrett here, back in the Move with Murph channel. I'm in the Richmond Ranges in the South Island, New Zealand. The scenery just turned up a little bit, my God. Uh, the last section I was doing was the Hamilton Auckland section. I don't know how much you guys know about New Zealand, but there is a lot of farms here. And doing the section between Hamilton and Auckland, I walked through so many different farm tracks lots of road walking it was exhausting so far that was the crux of this trail for me but i'm down here uh, i'm in this beautiful mountain range standing in that little hut right there which is another great perk of new zealand are these backcountry huts super nice but that's not really what i'm here to talk about today i'm going to do a little bit of a backpack review on the bag that i'm carrying and then after, at the very end, I'm going to give a couple other suggestions of backpacks that you might want to take on your through hike. So let's get right into it. The backpack I have, you may already have heard of this little pack. It's called the uh, Junction 2400 by Hyperlite Mountain Gear. Um, I'm definitely not the first dude to do a review on this backpack, and I'm not going to be the last. It's fairly popular. As far as a through hiking backpack is concerned, you will see these things all over the long trails back in the United States, especially. I've seen only one other one on this trail so far, and many people in New Zealand have never really heard of this backpack. And that's cool, not a big deal, whatever. Um, this was like the first backpack I saw as like a through hiking bag, and I was like, that's kind of what drew me to initially. I was like, I, I really want to own that bag one day. So here we are, we got it, we bought the thing. Um, you know, some of the things that I liked about it um, and why this bag is for me. Right now, this is a 40 liter backpack and I have roughly four days, maybe five of food in here. Um, so I'm pretty shocked personally that I can fit this much stuff in a 40 liter backpack. Um, I came from a 60 down to this one, so I was pretty excited about that. Um, it has an internal frame, a couple of aluminum stays, like go the length of the backpack and that really takes up a lot of the weight that you're carrying so i loved initially how much comfort this backpack had it's a bit sweaty on the back but it's just kind of how it's going to be when you're doing an ultralight backpack um i really love it holds up to 40 pounds um i just cannot believe how comfortable it is i've had a couple other lighter backpacks with frame stays or not frame stays sorry with a frame sheet. And the frame sheet um, just doesn't seem to work for me. Especially if I have a longer food carry, it's like really droopy. It doesn't really seem to hold the weight in a way that's effective and a lot of more falls on my shoulders. And if I had a lighter base weight, that wouldn't really be a problem. But being that I'm a little bit above 15 pounds, that's kind of an issue for me. So um, I love how that has an internal frame and it can carry up to 40 pounds. I love these water bottle pockets, they're huge. As simple as this backpack is, it's just one internal compartment, two side pockets for water bottles, and this giant net. These pockets, I cannot, I don't know how I could go on without these things. I could fit two bottles in this. I usually stick a bunch of other random stuff in there, like my poop kit or some toilet paper, maybe a water filter. Just random stuff, I'm just sticking in these. And this big old thing holds lunch, rain fly, whatever else. Like I love how these pockets are. Just simple, giant compartments. That's all it really takes for me. And I can just cram shit wherever. If I don't feel like getting my trash bag out, I just stick it in the net. Um, it has torn a little bit, and I don't really know where I did that, but it hasn't seemed to progress, and it's fairly durable. As far as a DCF bag is concerned, it's definitely more durable than I would have anticipated initially. Um, so it's got a couple compression straps down the side, hold the water bottles in, really get everything compressed right here. And then this big V strap on top. And this is like the number one thing of why I bought this bag for something else was that I'm a climber. I typically will carry cams and a rope, a bunch of really heavy stuff in the backpack and a spot to throw my rope or whatever else and really have that flexibility where I could carry something really heavy. Um, this makes that a backpack I can use outside of the trail when I'm climbing, doing some mountaineering, so on and so forth. 
So it's a pretty diverse bag. And there is a way that you can move some of these straps around and come through this loop up front right here and throw some skis on here or whatever else. So the simplicity also adds a lot of dynamic range and how you can use this backpack. So that's why it's for me. It's really not the lightest. It's not the lightest ultralight backpack. Maybe not the best choice for everyone, but it is a pretty good choice for me. Um, I really loved most parts of this backpack, but parts of it weren't, I just didn't make sense or were just kind of weird. Um, one thing is like, it's a waterproof material. They taped all the seams on the inside. They advertise on their website that this, with their ground, like with their stuff sacks, it is virtually waterproof. Um, it is not. This thing is not waterproof, even a little bit. Um, if it rains slightly or if it were snowing, you wouldn't have much of a problem. But at least here in New Zealand, when it rains, I have a puddle at the bottom of this backpack every single time. So I'm still using a pack liner. That's a huge bummer. I really had higher expectations for how water resistant this would be. But if it rains at all, I'm getting wet on the inside of that bag. So I have to use a pack liner. Um, and you know what? That's not the worst thing, but it, it just kind of seems like why would they go through all the effort to tape the seams and make it appear so waterproof when it's not even close? Um, it really seems to let in water down in the bottom half of the backpack. There's tons of stitching down here through this section, and that seems to be where all the water gets in. I have a lot of pooling from like here down. And so, whatever. That seems odd that they would tape all these things and like try really hard to make it waterproof, and it's not even close. That was a huge bummer. Um, the other thing is also related to waterproofness, these hip pockets. And you know what? They're hip pockets on a backpack. You can't expect that much out of them. These things, I sweat, when I sweat through the hip belt, it comes into the hip belt. So I just, you know, there's a waterproof zipper on here. Once again, tape seams, waterproof material. It just seems like maybe they could have tried just a little bit harder to make that stuff a bit more waterproof. So I wouldn't bank on this thing keeping anything dry for any reason. That was a huge drawback. And that's probably why I'm not gonna replace this bag. Like I was like, oh, it's a little bit heavier than some other things, but it's not a big deal because it's fairly waterproof or highly water resistant. Waterproof, I guess is not the right term for it, but water resistant. Um, and that's just not the case. That's not what happened here at all. So pack liner, whatever. Um, and then it's just, you know, I've gotten a couple pinholes. They give you some patch tape, but like a thorn just like, popped right through. So um, the abrasion seems to be not a big deal. The bottom's holding up really well, but like little pinholes are susceptible to that. And on this particular trail, you are in the bush. You are, it's this close to schwacking. Like there's barely a trail. The trail conditions here are a little bit out of hand. So at least on this, the TA in New Zealand, I don't think I would probably want to be running this backpack again. And another thing that I learned along the way is that DCF, if you have it at high tension, it loses a lot of its strength. And in a 40 liter backpack, I do have it at high tension a lot. So maybe it's partly my fault, whatever. Um, I just don't think that, you know, this is the bag I would use for this trail again. I'm gonna get it all repaired at the end of this. I'm going to hold on to it for as long as I possibly can. I'm gonna take it on some climbing trips. I'm glad I have this backpack overall. It's a great bag. I don't think it's for everybody though. I really don't. I really don't. I'm surprised it's so popular on the trails having used it now. It does carry a heavy load. Um, if I have like a six, seven day food carry, I can make it all work. I can throw the tent on top. I can throw all the food on the inside and it can carry all of that weight. But you know, it's not that common that you need to do that. There are lighter options out there than this or more comfortable options or more whatever. So you might want to assess A, what am I doing with this backpack? Where am I going with it? So on and so forth. $320 is what I had to pay for this backpack. And I just don't, I don't know. I don't see that price being uh, worth kind of what's going on here. You can do, you can do better for, I think that price. Um, some of the suggestions that I would say, 
in lieu of this backpack would be initially for maybe a beginner or a person that has a really heavy base weight. And if you're a weekend warrior and not a through hiker and you have a heavy base weight, probably above 15 pounds, getting close to the 20, especially photographers out there, um, you might want to get into an Osprey. They have the Atmos 50 liter and they have various sizes of that backpack, but it has a mesh back panel. It has an internal frame. It has all the compression straps, every bell and whistle you could possibly imagine in a backpack. It's wildly comfortable um, and it's cheaper than this. The real problem with that backpack is it weighs like four pounds and some ounces. I, I can't remember, but the thing is heavy. It's twice the weight of this backpack. So right then and there, it's bumping your base weight up two pounds. But if you have a heavy backpack in the first place, it's so much more comfortable than any of the more ultralight options that are on the market. So highly recommend checking that out if you're in that area where you have that really heavy base weight. The next thing and my second contender on the list was the Arc Blast from, Arc Blast, is that right? The Z-Pack Arc Blast. Arc, let me, Yeah, yeah, it's, it's the Z-Pack Arc Blast. For some reason that sounds really weird in my brain. That's a 55 liter pack. It's roughly the same price as this, but it's lighter. Um, it has an internal frame and it can carry just slightly less weight. It's in the 30 pound range. So um, if you're through hiking only and you're not a climber and you're not gonna be ski touring and doing some other things, that's a great backpack for just a long trail by itself. Um, that was my other choice. And the only reason I went with this one instead was because I can take climbing when I'm done. And I just didn't feel like buying new, two backpacks here in New Zealand. For some reason, back home in the States, I have a pile of backpacks and all sorts of weird gear that I just, I just like to buy gear. Um, but here I just wanted, I can only take two bags with me home. So I have this one and another duffel bag for some of my daily life stuff. So maybe next time I would go with the Arc Blast from Z-Pack, but it is pretty much the same price. It is lighter though. And the last suggestion would be a Waymark. The Darwin on the Trail, he is a YouTube creator. Love that guy's content. He makes some cool stuff and he helped develop this backpack called the Evolve. And that is for people who have less than 10 pound base weight and are really in that ultralight category. It doesn't have much of a hip belt to it. It's a one inch webbing piece, but you can exchange that for another hip belt. For, like other companies make hip belts that are interchangeable. So you can get a really light hip belt with that if you wanted to or not run one at all, but they specifically designed the shoulder straps to carry most of the weight on your shoulders. Um, and that's just gonna keep you feeling really light as far as you're not gonna be carrying tons of water you're not gonna be having long food carries and you have a very light base weight, definitely under 10 pounds because the maximum weight that that bag is rated for is 20 pounds total. And that's not a lot of room to work with, especially for me. So um, those are my three suggestions. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have to share on this backpack. And there's like, a <coughs> oh my God. I just inhaled a sand fly, fuck. <coughs> There's so many sand flies in this country. I can't even get, God, that's all. That's, I'm done. Thank you. Thanks for watching.